Hey guys, Justin Bryant here from selfmadesuccess.com. In this video, I'm going to show you 10 internet marketing strategies that get TechCrunch massive traffic. TechCrunch, if you didn't know, is one of the biggest tech websites in the world and they get millions and millions of viewers per year. They have millions of social media followers. If you look on Alexa.com, which tracks the uh, traffic ranks of websites around the world, they are 520 global ranked um, out of probably about a billion websites worldwide. And in the United States, they are number 355, where most of the top websites you will find on here in terms of traffic come from the United States. You look at just the top three, Google, Facebook, and YouTube, all originating in the United States. So they clearly have a lot of traffic and they are great at getting people to see their content on social media, on their website, and everywhere else. So I'm going to show you the 10 big marketing strategies that they use online to help you um, get an idea of what some of the big brands are doing and so you can apply them to your own business. The first thing that you'll notice they do is they publish about 18 articles and one video per day. Um, sometimes more than 18 articles. They might post 20, 25 articles sometimes, but they publish around that number of articles per day. And if you go to techcrunch.com, you, you can see their latest articles pretty easy, easily. And if you click on pretty much any one of these articles, You'll notice they're not very long. They're not super in-depth in many cases. Like this article, for instance, is just a quick news story. It's probably three to 500 words at the most. And that's about minimum for a blog post if you want to publish it. So when it comes to SEO, that's not ideal. When it comes to ranking with high competition, that's not ideal. But the thing is, this is a news site. And I'll talk more about why that works in a minute but when you're a site that can crank out 18 20 25 articles a day then you don't have to worry about necessarily writing the longest blog post especially if you're news related now if you're doing evergreen content you need to stand out and you'll want to publish longer posts but if you publish you know 20 posts a day with a thousand words each that's as good as if not better than one post a day that's 20,000 words so you might rank better per post if you do longer more in-depth posts and publish less of them but you might um, get into Google News you might get into Yahoo News you might get more social media traffic and things like that if you just publish on more subjects and just get straight to the point and talk about news and things like that. So that's what they do. They also publish one video per day, which is very doable. I'm not expecting you to publish 18 articles per day from whatever level you're at right now. You kind of need a team of writers or a lot of blog contributors or guest posters all the time. If you're going to do that, it's pretty much impossible to write 18 articles a day by yourself. So we'll get on. We'll get more into that in a minute on. A uh, couple other strategies they use related to that but what you can do is publish maybe one article per day and one video per day so you'll notice that they have a video section up here they have a YouTube channel link up here and they also if you go to their home page they also have their videos in their feed on their home page as you can see one right here so they know the power of videos videos are growing more and more in fact I just checked um, the other day and it looks like YouTube might have about the same amount of traffic or maybe even a little more it looked like they were ranked number two now above Facebook in traffic on Alexa so videos are growing and growing and growing in popularity and people are shying away more from reading long articles so you want to go with the trends but you don't want to give up on articles either because that'll help your site in Google so if you can publish one video and one at least one blog post per day you can start seeing more growth kind of like how TechCrunch did when they got started 
Number two, they share their content about every 30 minutes on Twitter and every hour on Facebook. So on Twitter, we'll talk about that first. They have 8.06 million followers as of me making this video. A typical Twitter post by them is pretty simple. It's the title of their news story, a shortened link to that story if you want to read more, and usually an image. Usually the featured image is what shows up. So as a side note, you always want to make sure you have your featured image that um, can get people to click on it and attract more people to click on the story and uh, you just have a featured image it can really make a difference in your traffic and how likely people are to click it especially in social media so you'll notice all these have an image um, and they have a description of the article and a shortened link so you can just click it and go to it but the thing is you can post more often on Twitter because the shelf life of a typical tweet is not near as much as say an Instagram post which can um, show up in your feed for hours um, after it's been posted but after you publish a tweet it doesn't take very long for it to basically not be in your news feed anymore because there's going to be a lot more recent tweets that are showing up so just keep that in mind and you can post 30 minutes at a time every 30 minutes or every hour on Twitter and get away with it it'll help increase your traffic to your blog so you might want to post more often on Twitter don't do it manually you need to use a tool to automate that one tool I recommend is revive old post you can get the free or the paid version the free version allows you to use one Twitter account the paid version is multiple Twitter accounts Facebook accounts LinkedIn um, but if you're just going to use it for Twitter just do the free version there's no reason to pay for the other one and if you're just going to do one Twitter account and what it'll do is it'll automatically share your past articles and your new articles um, as much as you want throughout the day uh, based on the interval you pick and it also has a uh, bitly and URL shorteners built in so it really covers all the stuff you need to post lots of content on Twitter automatically from your blog so it's a great tool I recommend you use if you want to do like TechCrunch does and post like this that's probably the best tool you can use for that on Facebook they post about every hour which is kind of excessive on Facebook but the thing is they're a news site people understand that their followers understand that and so they're always looking for the latest news from TechCrunch so they post it as soon as it's posted on their site and that can work if you are a news site or if you post a lot of content and it would it wouldn't work if you just posted on Facebook a couple of times a day and you posted 18 articles a day because most of your articles would never be seen on Facebook so you want to get your you want to get eyeballs on your posts so um, when you publish something you should just go ahead and publish it on Facebook obviously TechCrunch does that and it works for them 2.5 million plus likes on their fan page and this is what most of theirs look like it's just a link it has the featured image the title a description of it um, typically these types of posts don't get as much engagement as say a video like this where you just upload the video to Facebook the reason being Facebook loves Facebook they don't want people to leave their site so when you post a link it'll get less reach and that means less of your fans will see it when you post an uploaded video or a uploaded image more people will see it because it's not encouraging people to leave Facebook so just keep that in mind if you don't have a lot of articles to publish on Facebook don't try to post more just to post more you can post a couple or three times a day on Facebook maybe do an maybe do your YouTube video uh, don't publish a link to it upload it directly to Facebook for more engagement like they did and it'll look like this and maybe publish an image post and your blog post that would be a great day of Facebook marketing uh, another tool that you can look at for automating Facebook would be buffer you can go to buffer.com um, it's a free tool you can also get a paid version if you need it more but you can use it for LinkedIn, Google+, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and Pinterest. Um, if you don't want to get Revive Old Post Pro, where it would automatically share your articles on Facebook as well as Twitter, 
you can use the free version for just Twitter and use Buffer for Facebook. And that way you can schedule your Facebook posts and not have to do it manually throughout the day. Another thing that you can do is uh, you can post content on at least seven highly trafficked channels. That's one thing that TechCrunch also does. They try to post their content on as many high traffic channels as possible. And the channels they focus on are Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, Flipboard, LinkedIn, and Google+. Uh, you can also find their RSS feed here if you're still into that. But those, se those first seven channels I just mentioned are where they usually share their stuff, where they post their videos, where they share their articles and things like that. So you need to get on as many highly trafficked sites as possible. If you can share on each one of those sites that has hundreds of millions of people on each one, and just get across to the uh, part of your audience that's on there you will rapidly grow your traffic and you will build more and more followers and as more and more people see it you'll get more and more shares and more and more new followers will come so it kind of compounds over time that's how they've gotten millions and millions of followers so I always recommend Facebook and Twitter for pretty much any blog you also can use Instagram, you can post on Pinterest. I don't see them on Pinterest here, but um, Google Plus is great, great for blog posts. LinkedIn, you probably won't get a lot of traffic from LinkedIn, but you can try it. Flipboard is kind of a magazine reading site, so you can use that as well. And YouTube, of course, if you're doing any kind of videos, you need to post on YouTube as well as embed it on your site like they do in their video section or like a video like this. So. Post your videos on YouTube and your site, post your articles on your site, and then share them on as many top social media platforms as possible that you think your audience would be on. That's one thing TechCrunch has done consistently over the years, and that will really help your um, efforts to getting more traffic. One way to automate this is to use IFTTT.com, which stands for If This Then That. It's basically a way to automate sharing posts, sharing videos, um, creating content. You can even add your, um, I think you can add like your air conditioner and all kinds of stuff to this if you have like uh, some special smart home accessories and things like that. You can even um, add your phone to this if you have like an Android phone or something. Sync your iOS contacts to Google Spreadsheets. You can do the weather on here. You can do all kinds of stuff through automation with IFTTT. All you do is if you can do something like if I publish a post on WordPress, then share it on Pinterest or share it on Facebook, share it on Twitter. And it will do it automatically from then on once you do that on this site, which is free. And that way you won't have to manually share it yourself every time. So if you combine that with, say, Buffer and Revival Post, you can have a lot of great social media uh, automation going on. Next is number four. It's easy to subscribe to your favorite stuff on TechCrunch. If you look at their website, another thing you can take away from them is they always have a widget right here, as you can see that allows you to subscribe to whichever part of their news that you want to hear about. They have three different sections. You can subscribe to all of them. You can subscribe to just one of them or none of them, but it's really easy to do this. You just enter your email and click the button all in the widget area after you check the list that you want to receive information from, and that allows them to also get more traffic because as your email list grows you can just send an update when you publish a new article and people will instantly see it in their inbox and be able to click it and go straight to the article on the site that's one reason they've gotten millions and millions of visitors each each uh, year so have um, at least one option on every page for people to subscribe to your email list 
Ideally, you would have different categories of your blog where they can subscribe to a separate list per category because not all people are going to be interested in every part of your blog. They might be interested in one part of it. Like they have the daily crunch, they have TC weekly roundup, and they have crunch based daily. So if people are more interested in startup funding, they can just do this one. If they're more interested in just the top tech stories that they constantly cover every day, they can do that one. Or if they just want a weekly email and they don't want emails every day, they can do the weekly roundup. So it gives people options and it gives people a way to consume the information from your site that they want without um, opting into something they don't want to opt into. So one thing that you can do if you have a WordPress site, you can get a widget called WP subscribe. It's a plugin that you can get and it will allow you to put a box like that, program it based on what your email list service is. You can title it, put a uh, text in there to give people a reason to opt in, have some nice ad copy or something in there. And uh, all they have to do is put their email in and click sign up now and they'll be on your email list. So Building an email list is something all marketers know they have to do. There's, this is no different. TechCrunch knows that as well. Always be building an email list. Always have an option um, somewhere on your page that's easily visible to get people to subscribe. Number five, it's easy to follow them on social media. As I showed you earlier, if you look at their site, they make it extremely easy to find where else they can follow TechCrunch. So TechCrunch is, like I said, on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, Flipboard, LinkedIn, Google+, and RSS readers. But you can easily just click on any one of those buttons and go straight to the site and follow them in a matter of two seconds. So you want to do that. If you want to get it in the menu kind of next to your logo or in your uh, main header area and you want to do this like that and have it look really nice um, there is a way to do this there's a great tutorial on how to set that up on WP beginner called how to add social media icons to WordPress menus so that you can have it just like TechCrunch does just like Huffington Post does just like all of the major news and um, sites like that that get tons of traffic they tend to have something like this where it's easy to follow them on social media so I'll have this tutorial um, as a side note I'm gonna have all the links all the tutorials all the resources and show notes in one place on selfmadesuccess.com you can find that page and a link to it in the video description it will be in the first couple sentences it goes to selfmadesuccess.com and has everything you need to get the most out of this video. That way you don't have to memorize all the links that I'm talking about, all the tutorials, all the plugins and things like that. You can just go there, everything will be there after you watch the video. So I definitely recommend that you go through this and it'll teach you how to set up the um, social media logos and the links in your menu for your WordPress website so that it'll look kind of like TechCrunch does. And it'll make it a lot easier for you to get more followers and ultimately more traffic. Number six, focus on news. So that's one thing that they've done. I'm not saying that you should do it. Uh, news can be a pretty brutal business, but what you could do is if you want to get into news, you could do news in a very specific area. So they do tech and they really kind of started out doing tech startups so instead of just talking about gadgets they talk about the actual businesses behind the gadgets more than anything so you could do that and um, they've done so well at it posting countless news stories per day allowing them to get tons of traffic and even be in Google News and things like that so instead of worrying about evergreen content and ranking and SEO if you want to focus on news you want to get into Google News. That's one thing that TechCrunch has done and it's contributed to a lot of their traffic. So if you want to get into Google News and you want to get basically instantly put at the top of all search results, 
when people search for something uh, related to your news stories. Google News is the place to be. I'll have a link in the show notes page for how to get that set up. It's called Getting Into Google News. It's an official tutorial by Google itself, and they show you how to get it, how to um, get approved, and what they require for you to be a part of Google News. If you can get in there like TechCrunch does, and you're in a news area, then you can get millions of people visiting your site per year like they do within a matter of a couple years. So you either want to focus on evergreen content usually that ranks well, which you're going to want to focus on very in-depth content for, or you want to do news stories like TechCrunch does, where you can do short stories about the latest news as soon as you hear about it, and then get into something like Google News, Yahoo News, to where you get shot up straight to the top of search results. Number seven, they really push their most popular content. So another thing you need to do if you have a blog is have some sort of page where it's easy to find your most popular articles and your most popular videos, and things like that. If you look at their home page, it's very easy to find their most popular stuff. They have the stuff that's new, that's their latest content, and they also have a tab where it's their most popular content. So a lot of times the most popular content might have been even published um, years ago or last year or a few months ago and it's not always going to be the newest content that's the most popular uh, in this case a lot of their most popular stuff is in the last couple of days but that's because they rely more on um, social media and email and things like that for their traffic than they do ranking in search engines like uh, top SEO sites and things like that but many sites will rely on rankings and if you're relying on rankings you're not a news site your most popular articles are going to be the ones with the most shares the most views the most comments and things like that and you want to have a tab where people can find that stuff because if it's popular most likely the people are going to want to read that as opposed to your less popular stuff so to make it easy for people to find your popular posts so that you get more traffic and keep people on your site longer, you can use a tool like this called WordPress Popular Posts. It's a really good, um, highly rated WordPress plugin that you can use for your site that lists your top most popular post, your top 10, your top 5, your top 20, whatever it is you want to do. You can put it in your widget area, which is this sidebar over here if you want. and it will allow you to show people what your most popular posts are in terms of engagement views however you want to sort it it shows you right here sort post by and you can do views um, you can do the most social media shares you can do the most comments whatever you uh, deem as a better representation of the most popular post what is more important then you can sort it by that and it'll allow people to find it on your website and see you know what your really good what your best content is because people are going to be more interested in that like your greatest hits than just another regular post number eight they have a simple menu that makes it easy to find content you want so believe it or not a big part of marketing is actually making things user friendly because Google and these search engines are always transitioning more and more towards natural user friendly type of signals in their algorithms you need to focus on making everything as easy as possible and as straightforward as possible for people visiting your site one thing that is always in every site is a menu which is this up here where it says news video events crunch base that is their menu. They also have a search bar. You need to make it easy for people to find what they're looking for. Typically, the best thing to do and the thing that most big websites with millions of visitors do, like TechCrunch, they put um, their content categories and things like that in their menu instead of just, um, you know, contact and the about page and home page and stuff like that. That stuff is, it's, it's, 
better served being in the footer. If you want to put the about and contact us and stuff like that on your home page, you need to include that in your footer and uh, include the most um, interesting stuff for your readers, the stuff they're on your website for in the first place in your main menu. So don't have a lot of stuff in your menu. They only have four different things on here. They're events, crunch base, video, and news. So if you have videos, have a video section. If you have uh, four different categories of content, do that. You'll, you'll notice on other sites like Entrepreneur, Huffington Post, and places like that, they have their categories of types of articles they have in here. So they just make it easy for people to find what they're looking for. And if you're on a blog, you're looking for articles. You're looking for content. So just make it easy for people and people will stay on your site longer they'll be more likely to opt into your list they'll be more likely to follow you and you'll get more traffic because of all of that also have a search bar um, that's very helpful as well if they can't find a specific uh, post that they're looking for um, one thing that you can do for that when it comes to um, making a great menu for people is just you know keep things to a minimum and focus on the categories number nine they make sharing and commenting a priority and they make it very easy so as you can see on TechCrunch um, they are a very popular website and they make it very easy to either share the article or comment on it see these quick buttons I haven't even clicked on the article yet and I also I already have the option of sharing it on Facebook, sharing it on Twitter, sharing it on LinkedIn, Reddit, or commenting before I've even read it. So and then you get on the post, you go to the actual page, and you have more options to share the post. So they want you to get the post to go viral, to get it in front of as many people as possible. And to do that, people are not going to jump through hoops to share your stuff or comment okay it needs to be easy it needs to be straightforward if you do that people are more likely to do it so have share buttons at the top or on the side of all of your posts and have a place where they can comment very easily in the case of TechCrunch they use Facebook comments so you can do Facebook comments or WordPress comments but just make it easy and have buttons at the top and bottom that or even on the side that allow you to easily share and comment and engage with stuff because that's how you get in front of a lot more people. If you want a plugin or a tool of some sort that will help you with that, the best one I can re recommend to you, it is $19, but it's the one I use, it's the one I recommend because it has the most options and the most customization. It's called Easy Social Share Buttons for WordPress. And it allows you not only to have all types of different share buttons, but it allows you to program them in all different types of um, locations. And people can even follow you after they share your post. So if they click on the Facebook share button, um, after it's over, they'll see a pop-up that says, follow me on Facebook. So stuff like that can really go a long way in increasing your traffic. It's $19. I know, but it's a one-time fee, so it's really very cheap for the uh, incredible stuff that you get from it. And it even has analytics, and it's really fast. There's a lot of things to like about this one. I've been over pretty much every social sharing uh, plugin for WordPress, and this is by far the one I've liked the best. Last but not least, TechCrunch gets a lot of traffic because they make it easy to give story tips and pitch guest posts so it's not always easy to do all your own article research especially when you're trying to pub publish 18 or 20 posts a day and it's also just about impossible to do that when you're the only one writing so not only do they have um, writers that they've hired but they also rely a lot on the um, crowdfunding of articles and tips on the latest news. If you look at their website, they have places where you can contact them 
and get responses instantly about pitching an article so you can be a guest writer or letting them know about some news that maybe they didn't know about yet that they could write about. They have a place here called Get a Tip or Got a Tip, Let Us Know, and it allows you to um, contact them and get in front of the TechCrunch audience if they uh, like your article or if you just want to let them know about some tech news that maybe they don't have an article about yet. They always love to hear from people. So you can contact them there. Um, you may notice other sites have a place where you can apply to be a guest poster. Also, they have other spots on the site as well. I've seen on um, different areas, but you can always contact them and give them a tip on the latest news. There's another spot right here. Send us a tip and um, pitch an article that you could publish on TechCrunch as a guest. So if you look at sites that publish as many articles as they do, other sites like Entrepreneur, Business Insider, Forbes, Huffington Post, they have a lot of guest writers. So if you want to publish more content and get more traffic, try to get guest writers because you don't have to pay them. You're, they're not employees. They're just trying to get in front of a bigger audience. So if you allow people to easily apply or pitch a post or give you a tip on um, maybe some latest news stories that you haven't written about yet, that can do a lot of the work for you without you having to pay a lot of money for it. So if you feel like you got something from this video, if you feel like you learned about some things that you didn't already know about, um, please like and subscribe so I can create more videos like this for you. Also, I want to show you one last thing um, that I almost forgot to mention. This is a great article on Digital Marketer called How to Find People to Write for Your Blog. It's a great in-depth article on why the biggest companies don't do all the blogging themselves and once they get a lot of guest writers that is when they really start to take off and this shows you exactly how to do that it's a great tutorial I'll have it in the business or in the uh, video show notes so if you got something from this video like I just said earlier um, please like and subscribe so I can create more videos like this for you and help you out if you Feel like there's some things that um, maybe you've noticed TechCrunch do that help them build such a huge audience that I didn't mention that is one of their biggest internet marketing strategies or if you just want to let me know what you thought about the video overall let me know in the comments I'd love to hear from you I'm always looking for feedback to make these videos better and more helpful to you and if you want the video notes all the resources I mentioned, all the links I mentioned, all the brands I talked about, all the plugins um, and other related content. You can find all of that at the link in the description at selfmadesuccess.com. I'll have a page there that has everything you need to get the most out of this video. So go there after this video is over to get all of that. Other than that, I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you have a great day.